Hey everybody, welcome back to the VMP Performance YouTube channel. I'm here at the VMP Ranch with Mr. Andrew Sheridan from Mustang Lifestyle. Yep. Andrew, we are going to hook up your GT500 some more today. So we got a fresh belt to address that belt slippy slippy. Yep. And we got something else that just came in. Yeah. New VMP adjustable auxiliary idler bracket. Super clean, anodized all black. Little tiny VMP logo. We're gonna get this thing bolted up, and go back on the dyno, and keep on making horsepower. More horsepower. More horsepower. Because you didn't come <laughs> here just to get back to the same place you were before. Correct. We gotta throw a little something extra on there to get more out of it. So, yes. yeah. And that, and that little extra would be the new VMP 163R throttle body for the older cars, 05 to 14, with that style electronics. Make more horsepower. Cool. Let's head over to the dyno. Let's do it. We're actually doing two installs in one here. We are changing out the belt and we are installing the new VMP adjustable auxiliary idler bracket. So first thing we're going to do is get the tanks out of the way. I like to put something over the radiator so I can sit stuff here and not scratch it up and then just kind of pull them back. We can probably get away with just unbolting this tank. It gives us all this room to work with. The next thing we're gonna do is pop the belt off. If you have a factory tensioner, it takes a 3 8 ratchet. Let me go grab one. I like to use a longer handle ratchet with a flexible head. In a perfect world, you have a little stubby extension on here. I'm gonna try to do it without one. There we go. To change the belt, you actually need to unbolt the supercharger belt tensioner. So I'm going to use a 15 millimeter to get that off. So, one last thing. The supercharger belt is behind the accessory belt, so we need to take the accessory belt off as well to get the supercharger belt off. I'm going to have to dig over here on my right to get to that tensioner and just kind of loosen it up and slip the belt off. It's had a hard life. It's got a lot of shiny spots on it. Before we put the new belt on, we're gonna install the tensioner. This right here requires we take three bolts out of the coolant manifold which is where it will attach, which they're very easy to get to now that the belt's off. When you're doing this, you don't have to worry about any coolant or anything coming out because there's still two more bolts holding this whole manifold on the lower intake. Yeah. MP tensioner comes with instructions and new hardware. We don't need the instructions, but we do need this. These three bolts are gonna go right through here, here, and here to hold the tensioner on. Just gonna get these started by hand. These bolts are all six millimeters, so the torque spec is snug. Don't snap them because they are long. One of the things that's unique about this tensioner is that it's adjustable. The center bolt that holds the idler snugs the tensioner down when you're all set. I've got the adjuster all the way out right here, and I'm gonna slide it all the way up here. When you're putting a belt on a supercharged car, you never want to have zero play in the tensioner. The tensioner always needs to be able to spring back and take up a little bit of slack. So if you have to put a 500 pound gorilla on the tensioner and then pry the belt on, 
and, and there's absolutely no play in it, that's a really bad thing. You will break the belt at some point, you will break the tensioner, just something has to give in the system. So that's why it's so important to be able to set the amount of tension that's on there so it's not too tight. Since this car has a stock balancer, we're gonna use the 84 inch belt. We'll throw a belt routing diagram up on the screen for everybody that's watching. I've done this a bunch of times, so I think I remember how it goes, but if you haven't, it can be very uh, confusing. What you'll sometimes find is there's a way in which you can put the belt on that it's too long, and you're just sitting there saying, what the heck? We still have the actual tensioner off of the car. So what I'm gonna do is take the supercharger pulley, take the belt off of it, and just kind of tuck it down here so I can get enough extra slack to bolt the tensioner on. There it goes. There's a little trick that you can uh, sometimes employ if your belt is just a hair too short with your pulley combination. You can take one of these idlers off or take the supercharger belts off and actually slide the belt and the pulley on together because it's often going over this lip and then dropping into the grooves that is the, uh, that is the trouble. But we were able to get this one on without any issues. We've got our adjuster fully loose. This car does have a 90 millimeter idler below the coolant tubes here. Normally there's a 75 millimeter. So if we didn't have that on there, the belt would have a little more slack in it. It's not gonna be a big deal once we adjust that, but it's just something to take into account. If you were running a larger pulley like a 2.7, you'd probably have to go back to a stock idler up here just so your belt wasn't too short. Once again, five millimeter Allen key. The fact that this thing's adjustable probably makes you just want to crank all the way down on it. And like I was saying earlier, not always a good idea. I'm going to go for about a finger, a thin finger right here. Say about quarter to half inch, three eighths to half of an inch. I'm going to check the primary tensioner the factory spring-loaded one. I can still push this tensioner down a bunch. You can see that the belt's going slack. So I'm gonna put another half a turn or a turn on this and I'm gonna snug up my adjuster nut and I'm gonna call that good. A 17 millimeter wrench lets us lock down our adjuster. All right, so we'll throw the belt routing diagram up on the screen for you again, because the accessory belt can be a pain in the butt as well. It is, uh, goes up, down, around, under, and I was able to pull up on the tensioner with my handy 15 millimeter wrench and just slip the belt right over the power steering idler. If you're looking at pictures and diagrams online, keep in mind that 07 to 10 have an actual power steering pump right here, and 11 to 14 have electric power steering so there's just a little idler pulley right there. Now that we got the tensioner and the new belt installed, we're gonna go back on the dyno, hook up our boost sensor, make sure everything's good before we swap on the new throttle body. We're gonna get the car strapped down, get all of our equipment hooked up, tack and boost. Get you switched over to uh, a boosting tune because you've got the regular 93 sauce tune in it right now. Yeah. 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 No. More All the way. Me. Okay. We don't do anything half assed here, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we got to put the sauce tune in it. All right. So we'll get it all hooked up. We'll make some dyno pulls. So right now, we're really just checking the car out with the new belt, the new tensioner. We've got boost hooked up. I've got my data logging going. And we're just gonna make sure it's comparable to what it was the first time it was here before we put on the VMP throttle body. All right, 
minutes, I ended up doing two baseline pulls on Andrew's car to get everything figured out. It has been about five months since the car's been on the dyno here at VMP. When we originally put the Gen 3 R on, it was the middle of June, it was extremely hot. Now we're starting to get into some cooler weather. The car has a drag radial on the back, a different drag radial that is taller. So the conditions are different, the car's a little bit different, and the dyno numbers are different. Our original number, we were not able to very closely match, but we did see some interesting things. With the same timing curve and the dyno set to uncorrected, the dyno graphs pretty much lay on top of each other. So our new baseline for everything we're gonna do today is 754 rear wheel horsepower, 755 rear wheel torque. That's an uncorrected number, no atmospheric corrections changing the numbers. It is actual what the car is producing at this moment. So it's a great way to do comparisons when you have pretty average weather throughout the day like we do in Florida. We did see that boost was holding steady. It's not dropping off now that we've added the tensioner and the fresh belt. So we're gonna go get the 163R on, dyno it, and see what she does. This is the new VMP 163R Monoblade Throttle Body. This is the 05 to 14 style for GT500s and older Coyotes. It's got the dual electronics with a separate motor and TPS. There's actually some differences in the computer, so if you've got a 15 up, you can use the 15 up style electronics. If you've got a 14 and older, you have to use this style electronics. That's why we had to make an entirely separate throttle body. So Andrew's been waiting on this for a little while. Oh yeah. And more horsepower. You can see it's a big single blade design. Um, making it oval actually helps with the drivability and the idle quality because you don't break the seal all at once. It's on a on an arc on a curve. So we're gonna get this puppy bolted up and see how much more she makes. Your car still has uh, one of our old twin 67s on it. Yes, it does. You, did, you didn't even get a twin 69. You nope. got, I got a twin 67. Old. Yeah. Which You were trying to rob me of that three horsepower to make 800 originally. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> There's no hard feelings there. Okay. So, same bolt pattern on the back. Big, big difference in the opening size here. The twin blade design is really good for idle quality, drivability. Um, factory is a twin 60. This is a twin 67. We also make a twin 69. You know, good for seven, 800 wheel horsepower. I mean, we push them farther. But when you go to something like this, you see the power and the boost gain drastically as RPM goes up. The engine and the supercharger need more air, and they can they can definitely get all the air through this. <laughs> the Gen 3R is specifically made to fit up to the 163R throttle body. So if you use this on another application, you might have to do a little bit of port matching of the opening shape. The 163R does require a different calibration. Be loaded in the car for the computer to deal with the throttle body that's so much larger. And we do recommend a minimum idle RPM of 900 because it's just a big throttle body. It doesn't like to idle low. All right, we're back in the car after the uh, throttle body swap. Um, Andrew just informed me that the Foster SC Mods sound tube is so I can talk to the supercharger, not the other way around. was not warm enough I only made it to 6200 rpm engine coolant temp was about 150 and if you know these cars they don't give you the full 7000 rpm until you go above about 172 175 we picked up a pound of boost and about another 10 rear horsepower so this gen 3r only has a 2.6 upper pulley on it. I've been kind of uh, holding back on Andrew. I think now that we've got a good throttle body on it, it's time to let it breathe and we're gonna put a 2.5 pulley on it. Two six on the car before, 2.4 inch pulley on it now. It should work out to about another two pounds of boost. So uh, we decided that we do these types of videos where 
parts. We're creating content for you to watch and learn about uh, what we do. That uh, we're gonna, the final run number, we're gonna do another one without making any changes to back it up and make sure that uh, the number was not an anomaly. And when we go to do things again next time, we have a consistent starting place. Okay, so you saw me go really wide-eyed after that dyno pull, after I typed in the new mods in the notes section and hit save, because the car made 817 rear wheel horsepower and 808 rear wheel torque, a gain of 37 rear wheel horsepower and a buttload of torque. This is uh, apparently where the car wants to be. It likes to be a little bit warmer. It likes to have a ton of boost shoved at it. and. There it is right there. It's doing it on a regular October day in Florida, which is still like 75 or 80 degrees. Um, if you recall early on, we talked about just going to the uncorrected numbers because we wanted to have a better comparison um, between now and back then when we first put a Gen 3R on this car. We will show you the dyno graphs in both uncorrected format, what I'm looking at right now, also SAE, also STD, and also smoothing five, so you have all the data to look at. It's, uh, it's quite impressive, and the best part is the rods stayed <laughs> in it, and that's always a really good thing. Andrew is planning on building the motor later on, but it's still gotta live to be built. And for those of you that uh, that know a lot about the 5.8 Trinities, if you throw, if you break one of these, you're probably going to throw a rod. It's probably going to go through the side of the block, and it's probably going to be trash. So we're definitely um, leaning on it really hard, harder than we recommend. Uh, at VMP, the smallest we recommend going on a 5.8 is a 2.5 or a 2.6 upper pulley. We've deviated from that with a 2.4. But hey, you only live once, and you got to make that horsepower. Well, we made some more horsepower, which I'm excited about. Same day, same day and big gains. Yeah, new VMP belt tensioner, bigger VMP throttle body, smaller pulley, a little bit of tuning and a bunch of horsepower. What we figure, 65, 70 horsepower over what you came in with? Yeah, that's gonna be, uh, I'll see how the butt dyno feels, but we should feel that. Cannot complain about that. And uh, this video will be the uh, launch of the new VMP 163R throttle body. And the tensioner is available, has been available for a couple weeks as well. So we'll put the links below. Until next time, what is next time gonna be? Well, we're talking about E85, playing around some corn. Built motor after we get through some racing season. You know, we got some plans. So you're gonna build the motor, so now we're really gonna see the potential that Gen 3 R. Built motor, cams, head work, okay. higher compression. Our goal is what? A thousand on the first hit? He's, he's put this upon me for a brand <laughs> new motor to make a thousand wheel on the first hit on the dyno. And the crazier part is I think I can do it. So that will be that will be a little later on, but yeah, we might a month to two months, something like that. Yeah, it'll take you longer than that. <laughs> but maybe some corn in the meantime. So uh, until next time, check out the links below. Check out the VMP Performance channel. Check out Andrew's Mustang Lifestyle channel. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you next time.